Hey Flosstube, it's Carolyn. Thank you for stopping by to see what I've done in cross-stitching this last week. I want to tell you that it was an amazing week and that'd be a total lie. It wasn't a bad week, but it wasn't what I anticipated. But you know what? That's okay. I even to the point like it's, I'm filming my video two days late because it's like, I don't have, it's not interesting. So what? It's, it's my stitching. That's the whole point of this. It's showing what I'm stitching on a weekly basis. And if this last week wasn't amazing, you know what? That's okay. So the first project for this week is actually chronologically the last one, but it's the one I did the least work in. It's Heartstring Samplery's Coffee Quaker. And I realized that the sweet spot on this stitch is about 300. So here it was last time. And here's where it is today. As you can see, I've added most of this motif did a little stitching over here. It's This is all one color. This is about five lengths of Weeks Dye Works Palomino. And I, this is not my only 40 count for the week, so I'm gonna come back to it. But I did learn a little bit from this project, at least working on it this week, what I like about it and what I don't like about it. I really love all of the brown tones in it. I love all the cool motifs. I don't necessarily love physically stitching on this fabric, but I love the hand of this fabric. So it is a very odd and strange one for me, which is I think why it doesn't come out as much as I originally thought when I started this project. But you know what? That's okay. I really, I'm happy with even this. Like this is really cool looking and it's the first, this top part is with two pages and this is where I'm actually kind of coming down to page four or three and four. And so I'm very excited because right now it's just first I drink um, and I'd really like to say the part about the coffee then and do the things. So I'm just looking forward to that. Um, it was a blast. I don't know when I'm going to pick it up again, but really happy with what I got done this week. Now, my real problem for this week is Mirabilia Autumn the Queen. Now you're going to say that's your focus piece. Yeah, so if you don't remember what it looks like, here is the pattern and I have been working on the bottom half. So here's where I was last time. And this is where we are today. So I have started adding in the aqua color Krynik through this ribbon thing that she's holding. Um, some of, there's Krynik along the edges here. It's supposed to be, the rest of the surround on this is supposed to be one of the metallic DMCs. I cannot stand stitching. With the, metal with the DMC metallics. They're terrible, like just straight up refuse to. So I have some Petite Treasure Braid that I'm gonna try for the first time with this project, but I haven't pulled it out yet. I just didn't get to it. So I was mostly doing Krynik this week, did a little bit of Whisper, so I actually put in a lot, decent amount right here. And you're gonna say, well, okay, it's looking good. The problem is I was really hoping to get like a thousand stitches alone on just this project. You will note, this is not a thousand stitches. I haven't even touched the DMC on this in two weeks. I've been kind of mired down in Krynik and Whisper. And I really, really love the effect that both of those give, but they're a slower stitch for me. And I think that is, it kind of derailed me for this entire week because I really wanted to, I love filling this in so it looks so much nicer where all the krynik has gone in compared to where you have the big holes, but it's slow. And it's slow because I'm trying to make sure it doesn't tension as readily under my fingers. So I have to take a little more time about it. And I mean, it's fine, but it's really not much faster than me beating. And I am so slow at beating. I mean, I'm not the fastest stitcher anyway, but it's just this, it felt like I was dragging. Every time I pick this up, I'm like, oh, I love, and I, that's the thing. I finally get to see the aqua. This is so cool. I'm really happy with it. So why did I just not want to pick it up? I don't think I'm burned out on the project. I look at it, I hold it, and I love it. I think I'm burned out on dealing with Krynik to be honest. Um, the whisper was actually me changing it up because the Krynik was getting to be so, me not looking forward to stitching it, that I was like, okay, I'll do the whisper. When I find whisper to be more <laughs> enjoyable than the Krynik, you know, it's not that there's a problem with the Krynik, it's just, it was too much. And I really wanna get back to working with the DMC, finishing off down here. I mean, I'm so close down here. There's really not a lot left, but I haven't, gotten to it because I've been kind of focused on filling in up here and I'm really probably 
if I were smart, would just go all the way to the bottom and then fill in going up in a methodical manner and I'd probably be happier. And I don't know why I haven't done that right now. So I guess me talking out loud on the camera has already shared something that I can do differently and hope that I get different results. But again, I mean, she's still coming along. She's a great focus piece, I think, for this next week. Now, I've said that I'm planning on with, this is my focus mirabilia and then I have another mirabilia. I had like this last week, I projected stitching on her for three days and I do it generally by days. Um, I picked her up three days. I just didn't get a lot done on any specific day. So what I'm gonna do is let my other Mirabilia be kind of more of a focus this week and let this one kind of simmer a little bit on the back burner so that I don't burn out with the fact that I am working on it every single week. But I mean, it looks great, Let's see. <laughs> now, my other Mirabilia this week is one that I absolutely adore and that is the Stargazer. Isn't, I know I say this every time, but isn't this just really one of the most lovely patterns you've ever seen? I think so. I ended up spending so much of the week, because I started off with Autumn Queen for the beginning of my week, I was mired down with that, so I didn't end up putting in as much time with Stargazer as I wanted to. That's okay, I'm thinking of adding her in as a bonus piece this week. So we'll see, but here's where she was last time. And here's where she is today. So I have finally started with this underskirt area. I don't, because this these colors go all the way down to the bottom of her skirt, so I'm gonna guess that this is an underskirt, sure. Filled in some more of the ribbons here. So actually a lot of these are like, this uh, grid is 100% complete, and you can see where a bunch of beading is gonna go through her dress here. And I am, thinking on do I want to beat up top or continue down. For the moment I think I really like the idea of filling out all the DMC on this is roughly where the page break is. So finishing all the DMC that is in the top half of the pattern just so that I'll feel better about coming back up and doing the beading, I think. But anyway, doesn't she look great? I love the colors. I don't I ordered all the colors came together, so I don't know why it didn't occur to me that the blue for her underskirt was gonna be so bright compared to the rest of her is kind of muted. So this is, it's really nice. I was pleasantly surprised when I fished out the um, DMC and was like, ooh, new sets of blues. I really like it. And again, I'm thinking of doing her as next week's bonus because I just didn't feel like I got the time with her this week that I wanted to. That's cool. Now, this one is my pleasant surprise for the week. Modern Folk Embroidery is the Fruit of Plenty, the 2021 Sal. I wasn't initially planning on picking this up at all. It just, but I left them to my hands. Okay, it's an inanimate object. It did not leap into my hands in any way, shape, or form, but I was really feeling it. And so I was like, you know what? If this is what my inspiration is making me feel I should probably go along with it. So here it is last time. And here we are today. I have started filling in this cool upper corner motif. So, because right here. And I love, love everything about this. I love the colors I picked. I, it's so cool finally seeing like this bowl of fruit coming together so that you can see the lighter. Uh, color that I've picked like that is coming to play and not just the darker one. Okay, the darker one though is legit one of my favorite colors of all time. So it this is really really cool and I would mentioned this so coffee Quaker is not my only a 40 count for the week actually well, I put it down coffee Quaker is on 40 count beach brew linen. This is on 40 count vertical even weave, so this is 100% cotton. They're both 40 counts now. The beach brew linen is obviously dyed, so I don't know if that has caused the holes to be smaller to see. This one is a lot easier for me to work on pretty much no matter what. It's like with the white, I can really readily see where I'm trying to put my needle. I struggle to do that with the beach brew. So I'm kind of learning like, hey, what's 
how does 40 count work for me? If it's on the vertical, not a problem. I like I'll happily stitch on this for hours at a time and it doesn't hurt. The other one, not so much. I actually, I noticed some eye strain after about an hour. Um, and it's in part because when I'm stitching with my glasses, I'm nearsighted. So if I need to do detail work, I'll like look under the <laughs> bottom of my lens where I can see better without any um, vision correction than with my actual glasses, but it puts everything close and it really does after a while start to hurt. When I'm working on the vertical, I tend not to do that. And I can, again, I can stitch in my contacts and I can see everything still. So that just, it's telling me that even though they're the same count, they can like how there's just differences in the fabrics. So at least I, knew, I was starting to wonder, like thinking to myself, okay, 40 count's really easy. And then I use my other 40 count piece and I'm like, oh, this is hard. What's, what is it? And I'm realizing, okay, it's probably just the difference between like I said, the various fabrics. But this, this is a blast to stitch on. Um, I am kind of thinking that for the, until I get bored, I'm gonna just switch back and forth between the two, um, the Patrick Family Sampler and the Fruit of Plenty over the next few weeks, just because it's like when I get tired of one, I go to the other. The other thing I like is that honestly, there's a decent amount of white space. So I feel like I've accomplished something even without a huge amount of stitching. So per my gridding, I'm already 2% complete with this project. Winning! <laughs> okay, so for next week, and I don't have, I'm not going into crazy plans details because I don't have a crazy plan. Um, the reason I don't is because this week was honestly a little demoralizing for me. I had, I was planning on touching six projects I hadn't entirely picked out what they were gonna be, but I had a kind of rough idea. And then I, start, I got touched three of them. Coffee Quaker, I had to kind of force myself to, and it was the one that talked to me the most of, you know, please work on me. So I knew that it was the right project, but I just, I wasn't feeling it. And I don't know why. Not about Coffee Quaker, but like just why. And I think it was because I was really planning too much. So I will say my sweet spot is about four projects in a week because it allows me to get some work in and even better, I guess the way to perceive it is 300 stitches in a project and if it's not one that I'm focusing on, I tend to want to put it down and move on to the next. So if I do this smartly, and I didn't say I was gonna do it smartly, but if I do, then I can put we'll say a thousand stitches on my focus piece, which again is Mirabilia right now. Um, we'll say roughly 300 stitches on the other Mirabilia, 300 stitches in one of my samplers, and then 300 stitches in a whatever, I guess a whimsy piece. And then that, in cumulative is 2,200 stitches, which would meet my rough goal for the week. And that way I think I would be able to see progress. But the other nice part is if I know that at 300 stitches, just to stop and move on to the next, like switch up and do another project, if I get to 300 stitches in that next project, then it's easier to come back to that first one and say, okay, cool, I wanna touch you again. So that's why I'm like, I don't wanna get too stuck on plans because I wanna see how this works and if it helps me get more done. And yes, I know this is about a process and enjoying stitching. One of the things I enjoy about stitching is finishes and I uh, feel like I'm miles from a finish on anything and I'd really like to get closer to that. So that's, I guess, what we're talking about this. Anyway, I know that this is like literally probably like the shortest video I've ever done, but I didn't have a lot to share this week. I don't have any haul, which is good because I'm not trying to be shopping right now. I don't have, like I said, I wish I had more projects, but we're gonna try four, see how that goes for next week. Um, my Mirabilia is, it's gonna be Autumn Queen and Royal Holiday. I forgot to bring the pattern for Royal Holiday to float around here, but I'm gonna see if I can slide in, so actually this would be project number five, slide in Stargazer for some more time, just because I really wanted to get further into stitching her dress and I didn't, but again, We'll see how it goes. And then for the Autumn Queen, I'm only touching the DMC this week. I just made that decision, like executive call. I'm gonna just do DMC. I think I'll be happier for it. And then I can go back and touch Krynik and the Whisper, etc. So 
With that said, I hope that you guys were having a better stitching week than me, and I will see you next time. Bye.